worship, stand up if you're able, and praise Jesus. Foothills ladies and I am getting to do announcements with you today 
So first thing up, we have Coffee and Connect coming, which is a ladies' activity that happens once a month, the last Wednesday of every month. Um, it's an informal time where we can just connect with each other and have a good cup of coffee from Sam. And uh, it's just fun. So if you're looking for uh, an opportunity to meet some other ladies, um, come and join us. Grab a friend or not and uh, come and join us. It's a really fun time. Um, second up, we have a class um, for grief. I know there's a lot of us um, who have been traveling through a season of grief. And so if that's you and you want an opportunity to be able to connect with others that are in a similar um, stage right now, this is going to be a class that can give you some biblical tools to travel through the grief process, as well as connect with another um, a community of people who are doing the same. Um, third thing, we have Foothills uh, Fives registration that is open now. I don't know if you all are familiar with um, LHP, which is our Loving Hearts Preschool. This is an extension of that. It's our Fives program. We're entering our third year into the Fives. And I don't know about you all, but my classroom didn't look like their classroom. It is so fun in there. Um, all the colors, they have even a they built like a tree in the corner. It's so much fun. So if kinder is an age group that you have in your home, you can head to the website or you can pop into the church office and we can help you get registered for that. And last but not least, we have our Joyful Noise concert tonight. Um, so, so, so much fun. I don't know if any of you have had the chance to catch one of those yet, um, but it is just joy, pure joy. Um, kiddos singing to Jesus. I don't know, not much better than that. So that is all we have for you today. You can, um, yeah, just get ready to worship some more. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Kaylin. My name is Hannah. Let's all stand and worship together. We just want to give the Lord some praise. Because he is such a good father. He's such a good God. and pull at your command You hold the moon and stars within your hands And all with just a breath the world began God There's nobody like you God There's nobody like you God and there will never be when 
sing of the goodness of God. Welcome. It is good to be together. If you're joining us online, I want to say good morning and welcome to you as well. Always a privilege to be together. Hey, uh, you know, I want to talk about TV for a minute. TV is uh, oftentimes a reflection of our society. Would you not agree? The shows we watch kind of a reflection of, of where society is at, the good and the not so good. But perhaps one of the most popular themes found in TV and in, in sitcoms in particular is the theme of family, right? We all have our favorite uh, sitcom families that we've watched. And let's be honest, most of the time they're pretty unrealistic. <laughs> they, uh, the, either these families are portrayed as just over the top dysfunctional and unhealthy, and that's kind of what we laugh at, or they are uh, portrayed as unrealistically ideal and, and healthy, and you just think, that's not even attainable. That's crazy. Well, there's probably one show that I, growing up, watched probably uh, every episode. It was a little bit before my time, though, actually probably a whole lot before my time. This particular show aired between 1957 and 1963, but I'm guessing many of you are familiar with this family right here. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. When it comes to a family, the Cleavers were one pretty perfect family, right? I mean, just think about it. Mom, mom stayed home. She was perfectly dressed all the time, keeps a perfectly clean house. Dinner is always on the table on time, and it's hot, and it's served with a big smile. Dad works a great job. He comes home with a big smile on his face, and he plays with his boys and has just a great time. And then the two boys, Wally and Beaver, who while were mischievous, boys, at the end of the day, they were happy, well-adjusted, obedient, respectable boys. Come on. <laughs> we all know family is messier than that, right? <laughs> messier than what was portrayed with the Cleavers. And this is especially true when it comes to a blended family. Family perhaps is perhaps at its most messy state when it is blended, bringing two families together, both of which come from different backgrounds, different experiences, different family cultures, can be an incredibly big challenge. And just as there are very few families that look like the Cleavers, there are very few blended families that look like this one. I wish you could see how many people I saw singing along the whole time. 
<laughs> so great. If only it were that easy. If only it were that fun. But the reality is it's just not. All families have their challenges, but raising kids or living within a blended family has a set of challenges that are unique only to them. How do I know this? Because I live it. That has been my story. That has been my life. Let me share a little bit of my story with you. I was married in 1988, and I became a first-time dad in 1991. And by 1996, I found myself divorced. And then two years later, in 1998, I entered into the world of being a blended family. I live it. I have experienced it. Whether, and whether you are a divorced and remarried couple without kids or you are a divorced and remarried couple with kids, it's not easy. Here's the reality. Do you, do you, do you realize that roughly 45% of first-time marriages today end in divorce? with 60% of second-time marriages ending in divorce. And by the time you hit the third marriage, it's no better. In fact, it's 73% of marriages end in divorce who've been married a third time. These are not real encouraging numbers, but here's what I learned. Here's what I learned from them. There are a lot of people getting divorced and a lot of people getting remarried and blending families. And it's stressful and it's difficult. And that is evidenced by the divorce rate alone. But here's the good news. Enough bad news, right? Here, let me give you some good news. Here's the good news. It doesn't have to be that way. Amen. Amen. It doesn't have to be this way. Because when we apply God's principles to our families, particularly our blended families, we can avoid that. We can avoid being a part of those ugly statistics. And that's what I want to look at here this morning. Now, there were so many directions I could take. When I began sitting down thinking about this and praying and asking God to direct my thoughts and how, what I should talk about, there were just so many directions I could have taken with a message like this. But this morning, I want to look at just two facets of a blended family. Number one is just divorce and remarriage. Uh, the, the, the person, the people who have been divorced and now they're remarried. And then divorce and remarriage with kids. I wanna, I wanna look at both of those this morning because both of them are blended families. Whether there are kids involved or not, there are blended families. Now, if you don't fall into one of those two categories, I believe this morning, stay with me because I believe this morning that God's word will speak to you this morning. How do I know that? Because it always does, right? It always does. So I'm going to share a lot from God's word this morning, and I believe it's going to speak to you as well, because these are all timeless truths that apply to all of us. All right, so let's look at them. First is divorce and remarriage. When I got married in June of 1988, what a wonderful day that was. I could not have been more thrilled, more excited, more happy. I never dreamed in a million years that eight years later, I would be divorced. No one goes into marriage that way. No one gets, gets married thinking they're going to end in divorce. And, and I remember my first thought when I found myself in that situation was just like, what now? Whoa, what, what, what now? What, what does life look like for me now? Am, am I even loved anymore? Am I forgiven? Am I valued? Will I ever be used of God in the same way that I had been? Will the church accept me? I had all these thoughts. I mean, after all, I, I was a pastor, and I literally felt as if my calling and my career just hung in the balance. And I didn't know what was going to happen. There was so much confusion in my mind. And, and I'm willing to bet perhaps that there are some of you wondering these same things right now. Uh, perhaps you're wondering, will I be accepted the same now that I've been divorced? Will my family be accepted in the church now that we're this blended family? I've remarried and I have this blended family. Is there a place for me in the church? And I have been asked those exact same questions by folks here at Foothill so many times. Pastor Brian, I, I'm interested in coming to your church, but I got to tell you something. I'm divorced. Will I be welcome? Absolutely you will. I'm a single person. I don't know. Am I going to fit in? The answer is yes. Yes. Because here's the good news that I want us all to get. You are loved, you are forgiven, and you are valued. Amen. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. That you are loved, forgiven, and valued. Because when you understand that, when you understand this, you will not only enjoy a healthier marriage, but you will see how important you are and how valuable you are to the kingdom of God. 
So here's what, here's what you must, must understand. You are not loved, forgiven, and valued less because you've been divorced. You are loved, valued, and forgiven the same. Let's, let's look at that. You are loved just the same. Here's something that we all need to understand, that God never, never, ever views you as used goods. Don't ever go down that path. Don't ever get that, that, that lie in your head that, that somehow you're now tarnished or you're, you're looked upon as less than. You were loved, you are loved, and you will always be loved by God. Look at Romans 8, 38 and 39 with me. It says, and I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, whether I'm divorced or remarried or whatever my situation is, no power in the sky above or on earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will be, ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Here's the trap that I find uh, so many people fall into. In fact, it, it's, it's really more than a trap. It's a lie. It's a lie of the enemy. And it's this, that I am defined by the bad things that I have done. Or I am defined by the bad things that were done to me. That is a lie of the enemy. You are not defined by your mistakes. You are not defined by the bad things you have done. And you are not defined by the bad things that were done to you. Please understand this. You are defined by God's unfailing love, period. That's what defines you. You are a child of God. You are dearly loved. And nothing can change that. Nothing can change that. Nothing can separate you from his love, including divorce. Psalm 103 verse 11 says, for his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. His love for you is great. He wants you to understand. Now, I don't know why the circ what the circumstances were surrounding your divorce. The reality is divorce is ugly. God hates it. It's far, it's far from his ideal. You may be divorced because of something you did. Or you might be divorced because of something, some, something someone did to you. A broken marriage happens because we are broken people. We are broken people trying to do life together. And sometimes this is the direction that it goes. Divorce happens because of sin. Let's just call it what it is. It is sin. But we must remember this, with any sin, when you follow the words of 1 John 1, 9, which says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and he is just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. Let go of the notion that you are not, that you are not forgiven. And please remember this, that you are forgiven just the same. You are forgiven just the same. Please do not hang on to your mistakes, to your sin. Because God doesn't. Psalm 103, verses 12 to 13, look at this. It says, he, he has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. He has removed our sins. He does not hang on to them. People might hang on to your sins. You might hang on to your sin, but God does not. God does not hang on to your sins. And there's a phrase in there that says, he cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. I want you to think about this with me because I find that this stuff so fascinating. If I was to hold a globe right here and, and, and I was going to travel around the world, okay? So if start at point A and I'm going to decide I'm going to travel around the world going north, okay? So I start here and I start going north. When I hit the North Pole, what happens? I start going south, Right? You go north and then south and you go north and you land there again. Now, what if I start at that same spot and I started traveling east? What happens? I'm going east the whole time, right? All the way around. East never meets west. Now, that's what God wants us to understand. He has cast our sin as far as the east is from the west. 
When God says he has removed your sin, you can be sure of it. You can be sure that he has. Do not hang on to it. Let it go. You are forgiven and it's forgotten. And when we understand this, when we understand that we are loved, when we are forgiven, we understand our value. We begin to understand our value. Please know that after you've gone through a divorce, you are loved the same, you are forgiven the same, and you are valued the same. You are valued because, because God loves you the way that he does. You can be assured that you hold great value. Look at Ephesians 2.10 with me. I love this verse. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Notice something here. You never see the word unless in that verse, do you? It doesn't say you are God's masterpiece unless you've been divorced. Or you, are, you, uh, uh, you can do the good things he planned for you unless you've been divorced. God has a purpose and God has a plan for your life. And here's why. Here's how I know this. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and 29 says, For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is no longer, says there, no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, divorced or remarried, or whatever you want, you want to put in there, for you are all one in Christ. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. And get this, you are his heirs. You are his heirs. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Amen. Amen. You belong to Christ. You belong to Christ and will be used of him to make a kingdom difference if you let him. There's a phrase we use around here at Foothills all the time, and that's shape. What am I talking about if you're new with us? Shape is simply an acronym that describes the way that God has, has shaped us, has formed us, wired us, created us to make a difference in the kingdom of God for him. Uh, there, uh, S, spiritual gifts. God has given all of us unique spiritual gifts so that we can be used for the kingdom of God. He's, all, he's given all of us a heart for something, right? He, you have a heart for, for a particular ministry or a heart for a, a, a people group that might be different than mine. God has given you a heart for something, and then God has given you abilities. God has given you unique abilities. You can do things I can't do, and I can do things that you can't do. God has just wired us that way. And then God has given us all unique personality. That's what P is. All of us have different personalities. Imagine if there's only one personality in, in all humanity. Wouldn't that be a horrible, oh, I don't even think about it. We're all uniquely, you have different personalities, and that's such a wonderful thing. And the E stands for experience. We all have different experiences in this life. And an experience that he will use in your life if you let him is your divorce and your remarriage. That's part of your shape. That's part of your experience. That's part of who you are. And it's valuable to him. God will never let your story go to waste. Please see that God is writing in a beautiful story in your life, with your life. And so oftentimes people realize that and then they get tripped up, they sin or they get divorced and they think the story's over, book closed. No, God is continuing to write a story in your life and do not let him or do not uh, waste that story. I can't tell you how many people God has brought my way, brought my direction throughout in my life who are going through a divorce or who are about to get remarried and he's used my story to encourage them to bless them. If you have been divorced and remarried, thank God for the gift of your marriage. Give him the praise. Thank God for your marriage. Love each other with all that you have got. And love each other the same way that God loves us, the same way he loves you. And just as God loves and forgives and values you as a married couple, do the same for each other. Do that for your wife. Do that for your husband. Allow God to write a beautiful story with your marriage, and he will. He will use you to make a kingdom difference. And let me say this too. We here at Foothills accept you. We accept you just the way you are, knowing that God has tremendous kingdom-sized plans for your life and wants to use you. All right, let's talk about divorce 
and remarriage with children. But first, let me back up just a bit. Let me back up a little bit. Getting married for the first time, that is one exciting moment, isn't it? It is an exciting moment. And while it can be one of the most exciting and joy-filled moments, it also can be one of life's greatest challenges. Let's be honest, marriage takes hard work. Anyone married would agree with that. Marriage takes hard work. It's a challenge. It requires a lot from us. It requires a tremendous amount of sacrifice, and anyone married can attest to that. Pastor Dale, when he began this series, uh, he, he talked about that in the first uh, couple of weeks. He addressed the husbands, and he addressed the wives, and, and the whole idea that it takes work. It's not easy. It's a challenge. It takes work. In fact, I'm looking forward to this fall. I'm going to do a little plug. I'm doing, uh, this fall, I'm going to teach a marriage class on Sunday mornings. And I would love to have you join me. I want to invite you to be a part of that. I hope you will consider that. And just learning together how we can live a better story with our marriages. But blending two separate lives together into one comes with a unique set of challenges. But getting married for the second time, as we've just discussed, comes with its own unique set of challenges. But what makes it even more challenging is when there are children in the picture. Now, I don't, don't, don't hear that I'm saying that children are a problem or children are bad because that's not, that's not at all what I'm saying. It's just that blending two people together is one thing, but blending multiple people together into one family, that, that is a whole different matter. Suffice it to say that blending two families into one is not, as always, not always as easy and fun as it was for the Bradys. <laughs> It's, it's just not, it's not. But like anything, when we allow God's principles to guide us, we can find success. I love Proverbs chapter three, verse six. It says, seek him in all that you do and he will show you which path to take. Seek him in all that you do. Seek him as you are raising your family, as you're blending your families together. Seek him and he will show you the path that you can take. I take such comfort in that. I take such courage in, in, in that truth that he will always show me the way if I am willing to seek him. And, and I want us to understand that. I want, I want us to understand that when we follow God's plan, we can experience a healthy blended family. And he does, he does show us how we can do that. I've always felt that the greatest way to know how to relate to others is to look at the way that God relates to us. You want to know how to relate to the people in your life, look at the way that God relates to you. Parents, if you want to know how to best love and raise your children, look at the way that God loves and raises you. A husband, if you want to know how, uh, know how best to love and lead your wife, look at the way that God loves and leads the church. We read in Ephesians chapter 1, it says, uh, it talks about how we as Gentiles, which, which is people that aren't Jews, okay? If you're not a Jewish person, you're a Gentile. And, and it talks about how, how we have been adopted into God's family with full rights as his children. You see, the Jewish people are God's children. They are God's chosen people, God's chosen children. We read that throughout the Old Testament, throughout God's word, how the Jewish people are God's chosen people. But we learn that we who are not Jews have been adopted in to the family of God. We've been adopted in because we are his kids as well. Look at Ephesians 1 uh, verse 5. It says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and he gave and it gave him great pleasure. And in John 1:12 it says, but to all who believed him and accepted him, all he gave the right to become children of God. What if we looked at our blended families, our blended in children the same way? Imagine what it would feel like if, if God looked at us as less than his children, if he looked at us as, as non-Jews and said, yeah, yeah, you're okay, but you're not as important. You're not as important as my chosen children. What if the obedience equals blessing principle only applied to the Jewish people and not you? How would that make you feel? It would be really hard it would be really hard to feel like a child of God and a member of his family if that is the way that we were treated by our father. And yet oftentimes that is the reality of children and blended families. 
they don't have the same rights. They don't have the same privileges that the other children in the family have. I've had so many conversations with, with young kids and adult kids talking to me about that very same thing. I never felt like I was a part of the family. I never felt like my step-parent viewed me and saw me the same way as they viewed their own children. If you want to enjoy a healthy blended family, and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. And then 1 John 3.16 says, we know that what real love is, that Jesus gave up his life, that he gave up his life for us, so we also offer your feelings for their security. This is so important. Be willing to sacrifice your feelings for their security because a belief held by so many children in broken homes is this, that somehow the the, the breakup of their parents was their fault. And it was not. And until they come to understand that and realize that, they will never walk in security through their life. As a parent, we, we need to bend over backwards communicating that to our kids, communicating that the breakup of their parents was not their fault because until they believe it, again, there there will be no security. And at the same time, never speak poorly of your ex-spouse to your children. Never do it. A commitment I made to myself and, and to my daughter when her mother and I divorced was that I would never speak poorly about her mom to her, and I never did. I wanted her to feel completely loved and secure in her life. And if I were to speak poorly of her mother, e- even if I felt justified in doing so, I would have jeopardized her security, and I was not willing to do that. Please do not do that. Sacrifice for your children. Sacrifice your feelings for their security. Now, what about raising a a child in a blended family that just really gets under your skin? You know, the the, the child that's just different than yours. They they come from a different background, again, a different family culture. They do things differently than than what you do and what your kids do. Well, again, let's look at what what Christ does for us. Look at the way that Christ looks upon and parents us. If you want to enjoy a healthy, blended family, then you must forgive your children in the same way that Christ forgives you. Colossians 3.13 says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone. Anyone who offends you, remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Remember, when you choose to get married and to blend two families together, you are choosing to accept your spouse's children as your own. So important. Children are very perceptive, very perceptive. If you're treating, you, uh, if, if you are treating your children with more favor than your blended in children, they will know and they will respond and it will not be pleasant. Trust me on that. Your blended children, they may have come from a different, different they have come from a different home than yours. They have done things differently They've had different experiences. 
Every family, I've said it a moment ago, has its own unique culture, right? Every family has a unique culture. Now they're being asked to fit into yours. It was likely never their desire to see their parents divorce and be blended into another family. So show them some grace. Give your children grace to be who they are. Because that's what God does for us, right? God extends such amazing grace towards us, and we must do the same for our children. Discipline them, yes, but do it in a grace-filled, understanding way. Because again, that is what forgiveness looks like. Look at Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and the instruction that comes from the Lord. And as you do this, you show them value. Value your children in the same way Christ values you. Show them how valuable they are. What, what, does, what does that look like? How do we do that? Well, a demonstration of, of the way that Christ values us is in the way that he accepts us. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, anyone who belongs to Christ has, begun a, has become a new person. The old life is gone and the new life has begun. Christ takes us right where we're at and he accepts us and he forgives us. And he ushers us into a brand new life and it's a better life. Your blended children have been ushered into a new life. And it's your responsibility to make sure it's a good one, a better one, just as Jesus has done for us. Whether your children desired a new family situation or not, it is critical that you as parents make sure that they know that your home is truly home, home to them. Home should be a place of safety a place of security, a place of love, a place of acceptance, a place of escape from this, the mess of the world, a place where we can just get away from it and drop our guard and feel loved and secure and accepted and at peace. Just as God has given us the right to become his children with full access to him, we need to do the same with our kids and they will feel that way. That is what's gonna make it feel like home. So make sure you are fully and completely available to your children. Fully and completely. You, you, wanna, you wanna show value to your children? Be available. Be available to them. I, I know I have value in God's eyes because he gives me full access to him, to himself, and he has given me the right to be his child as we just looked at. And because of this, I have peace. Because of that, I find security in my life. And our children need to feel the same from us as their parents. So make sure that your children know that your home, that in your home, that they have full access to you, their parents, that you are there for them. And this is more than just providing for them. I've talked to so many people and said, well, I don't know what the problem is. I'm providing for them. I got food on the table. I got a roof over their head. They should be happy. <laughs> it's so much more than that. It is so much more than a home and food and clothing. It's creating an environment, creating an environment of acceptance, an environment of access to you. You know, one of the greatest pleasures in my life that I have had is watching my wife, Robin, accept my daughter as if she was her own. There has never been any question in my daughter's mind that while Robin did not give birth to her, that she is loved and she is accepted just as if she had. And you know, now 24 years later, they enjoy a bond and a relationship that is so special and is so meaningful. Your children need to know that they are accepted for who they are and that they can come to you with their needs and their struggles and their hurts. It is parenting like this that speaks value into our kids. So if you want to have peace in your blended home, if you want to experience peace and if you want your children to feel secure, your children must know that they hold the same value to you as your natural born children. 
and then they're going to experience security, and then they're going to experience peace. And and like I said, in, in all things, when we follow God's word, we will experience a healthy, blended family. Does this mean it's, it, everything is, is, is going to be easy? No. But it's going to be blessed. As you follow God's word, as you follow his truth, as you follow his principles and raising your family, God will bless your family. And a healthy family is a blessed family. And God wants to take your family and use it for his glory. As everyone in your family knows and believes that they are loved and forgiven and valued, God is going to continue to write a beautiful story in your life and in the life of your family. I believe that, and I hope that you believe that as well. Let's take a minute and just thank him for that. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for the way that you parent us. Lord, for the way that that you show love to us, the way that you have forgiven us and the way that you value us. And Lord, I pray that as we raise our children, particularly in a blended family situation, Lord, that we would show them how much we love them. Lord, that we would forgive them in the same way that you forgive us. And Lord, that we value them. Lord, that we would show them how much we value them by the way that we are there for them, by the way that they have access to us. Lord, we thank you for setting the example to us in how to have a healthy family, a healthy, blended family. Lord, may we cling to your truths. May we do as Proverbs 3 says, to trust you in all things, and you will make our path straight. You will make it clear for us. Lord, that's what we want to do with our families. So God, I pray that these truths of your word would just run deep within us, that they would continue to resonate within us. Lord, that you would make us better parents, that you would make our families better families, and as a result, this church would be a better place. And that you would be glorified in all. And we pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. And everyone said together, amen, amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? Let's continue worshiping. Thank you, Brian. Good word. Put our hands together. Don't be afraid to hop around. Put your hands together. Sing loud, hoot and holler. We're here to give the Lord some praise.
darkness won't last very long I've got a feeling the darkness won't last very long Yeah, I've got a feeling the darkness won't last very long Do you believe? I've got a feeling the darkness won't last very long Yeah, I've got a feeling the darkness won't last very long Oh, 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 Don't forget about Joyful Noise tonight. We'd love to see you here.